Grandpa Storytime, and I'm here to tell you a story today about the War of 1812. It's actually the story of the Star Spangled Banner. You know, we start off this story with Fort McHenry, and in Fort McHenry, we have a commander who has decided that we really, really need to be able to have a big flag. Major George Armistead, commanding officer, said to have a flag so large that the British would have no difficulty seeing it from a long distance, like down the Chesapeake. So he commissioned Mary Young Pickers Gill actually go out and sew together a flag. And it was huge. I mean, this is not just a little flag. He actually had her build two different flags. The first flag was called the storm flag and it's a little flag and this little flag is 17 feet by 25 feet and then after she finished building that flag he had her go out and build the garrison flag which was 30 feet by 42 feet. This is a huge flag. It's like the size of a building. I mean, that's a two-story building, and it's huge. And you can see that it just, he wanted to make sure that the British could see it way down the river and have no issue being able to see this at all. The next thing that he did in preparation for the British for coming and attacking them is built up earth or dirt all around the embankment in front of the walls. The earth literally comes up to the wall. It's not like in the old forts that you used to see in the old days where there was, you know, like a 10 or 20 foot high wall with that they would have to bring their ladders and climb up to. No, this wasn't meant to prevent men from climbing into the fort. This was meant to prevent cannonballs from destroying the walls of the fort so that when the cannonballs hit the ground, it would just go boom, right into it and stop and not be able to do any damage or very little damage to the walls. On August 24th of 1814, the British were able to invade, attack, and overrun Washington, D.C. They were able to take over and burn the White House to the ground, and the British were excited about it because, after all, they'll go ahead and fall, they'll become our colonies again, and then we can move forward. So they moved down and around and up into the Chesapeake, and that's where we meet Fort McHenry. As you look at this picture, you can see that three-quarters of the way around the peninsula is all water. And you'll also notice that there's a star pattern of the fort, and the reason for that is that they can face their cannons in different directions and be able to completely cover every bit of the entryway into the port from that fort. Francis Scott Key on September 12, 1814 was asked to board an American ship where he went out into the bay further down from the fort where there were some American prisoners that were being held there. He went and negotiated their release, was granted their release, and then the commander of the HMS Surprise, love that name, Surprise, you're staying, because we are going to attack Fort McHenry tonight. It's not going to matter in the morning anyway, because the fort will be ours. It won't, really won't make any difference. Oh, and by the way, now because you know our plans, you will not be able to go back. You get to stay. Francis Scott Key was aboard an English ship out in the Chesapeake watching the sunset and the British started the bombardment of Fort McHenry. You can see in the bottom where the U.S. ship with Francis Scott Key was originally. He transferred over to the HMS Surprise. You can see between the land up there where the British fleet is ready for the bombardment. And they were back that far so that they were out of the smaller guns range of Fort McHenry so that they could pretty much have very little damage done to them but rain havoc on the Americans at Fort McHenry. At nightfall, the British started the bombardment. This bombardment went for 
between 27 and 34 hours. It started with the evening and it got into the night and the next morning they were still bombarding away all afternoon into the evening into the night they kept bombarding in the middle of the night here some of this they did the flares so that they could see where they were attacking and then these huge 14 inch cannonballs that they sent out that came crashing down into the fort or attempted into the fort way back out down the Chesapeake during the night all during the day during the night Francis Scott Key is watching for the American flag as long as the American flag is raised he knows that the Americans are still in charge and that the fort has not fallen to the British yet he keeps watching in the middle of the night they stop attacking he doesn't know if they have surrendered he doesn't know if the British have won he doesn't know if the Americans were successful and were able to withstand the British attack in reality the fort itself had sustained very little damage out of a thousand soldiers there were four that were dead there were 24 that were injured. The storm flag had received quite a bit of damage. You can see the hole in the middle. That's where a cannonball went through the middle of it. But during the middle of the night, the Americans lowered the storm flag and raised the garrison flag so that at dawn's early light, as soon as the sun started coming up, Francis Scott Key was able to look through his telescope and he was able to see not the storm flag but the garrison, the huge, huge garrison flag flying atop the 90 foot flagpole. He knew that the Americans had survived. It was going to be another two days. This was the morning of the 14th wasn't until the 16th that the British set him on land. It was during that two days that he took an envelope and he penned the poem, The Star-Spangled Banner. He wrote it with four verses. The song was sung to an English folk song that they sung in the pubs, the bars. That is the story of The Star-Spangled Banner. Remember, that when the Star Spangled Banner is sung, there are two things that we always do. Number one, we always stand up. Number two, place our hand on our heart. And this is to reverence the fact that this is our national anthem and that our flag was still there.